what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of RX Bar. Uh, they end up selling to Kellogg for $600 million, so check out the interview I did with Peter. Um, P90X founder Tony Horton talks about how he made, he's an impressive part, Jason, is hearing the backstory. Like, it's not always they just arrive and they make hundreds of millions of dollars. He started off as a street mime, and he would make his food and rent money by putting a Hat on the street and doing street mime performing. He's a street uh. performer. Baby Einstein founder, um, they grew from in like less than five years from zero to $20 million. They ended up selling to Disney later on. But the most impressive part was she calls herself the cancer assassin. She actually beat cancer twice um, you know, through her career, and that was amazing. And then uh. Uh, Atari founder Loan Bushnell talked about you know he was steve jobs's mentor he talks about steve offered him 33 percent of apple for fifty thousand dollars and why he said no so check wow. those episodes out um this episode is brought to you by rise 25 which i co-founded with my business partner john corcoran our mission at rise 25 is to connect you with your best referral partners and customers and we do that uh, for for people through a done for you podcast solution, which in my mind is the best thing I've done for my business and my life. So we help your company completely run and launch your own podcast. We distribute it across all different channels. You know, from your blog, you know, from your website to you know iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all of them. You simply you show up, you talk. We do everything else. Our team has been working with podcasters since 2009. I personally credit podcasting as the single best thing I've done. Um, it's allowed me to connect with founders of P90X, Atari, like I mentioned, Mattel, RX Bars. The list goes on and on. I even met my business partner through podcasting. And the inspiration is actually behind Inspired Insider is actually the interview that the Holocaust Foundation did with my grandfather who escaped from Nazi Germany. Him and his brother were the only people to survive. And it's published on my about page, but that's really the true inspiration. It's not just business related. It's helping you leave a legacy. It's helping your guests leave a legacy. So if you have questions, I think any business should start a podcast. Do it. If you have questions, just email us, support at rise25.com. We're happy to answer them. Um, I am excited to have today's guest, Jason Katzenbach, um, co-founder of amazing.com. I got a message from a friend, Dr. Charles Livingston, who's an amazing entrepreneur, giver, marketing genius. Uh, his site's drcharleslivingston.com, and he tells me, you need to have Jason on the podcast, and I already knew who Jason was, so I'm like, yes, that sounds great. I've been following <laughs> Jason and Matt uh, Clark, their trajectory since the beginning. I had Matt Clark on the podcast all the way back in 2013, um, and Jason you know, always knew he was going to be a leader, and I, I listened to this story that Jason told, and he marched into the break room at one of his jobs at age 23, and he, I, I would imagine, Jason, how I would react if I was one of your fellow employees, but he marched in and said, I'm going to be your boss in five years. If I liked you, I'd be like, cool, Jason, go for it. If I didn't, I'd be like, please don't. But he actually ended up doing that. <laughs> he ended up doing that in three years. He ended up quitting his job after realizing that being with the company was not as secure as he had thought. He went on to do $3.5 million the following year. He eventually met Matt Clark, and the rest was history. And Amazing.com has taught over 30,000 students and how to build a successful Amazon business. Uh, Amazing has their flagship course, Amazing Selling Machine. If you haven't checked it out, go to Amazing.com and check it out. They have Seller Pro, which is their monthly membership, and they have Amazing Accelerators. This is for existing sellers looking to scale their business. And yeah, because they've produced so many successful students, they're like, the students are probably like, Jason, uh, we need something for the accelerated track. Can you give us something? They, they created it. That's, um, that's and, pretty much right ex on. Exactly. Yeah. And their annual conference, SellerCon, not to be missed. My friend Rich Goldstein was like, this is one of the best conferences he's been to. And uh, you know, they have past speakers like Richard Branson, Sarah Blakely, the founder of Spanx, and many more. And for Jason and for their team, it's not just about making money, but it's really about helping give people a freedom, a freedom over their life, a freedom over their family. And so if you haven't checked it out, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family to check it out. And so, um, Jason, thank you for joining me. 
You're more than welcome. Thanks for having me here. You know, we all get into this business stuff for a lot of reasons. And um, I want to start with what matters and why we do what we do because it's a family. I know your family is very important to you. Um, I want you to talk about how being an entrepreneur has affected your parenting. Yeah. Um, well, you know, first of all, being a business owner, uh, there's so many parallels to family life, whether it be marriage or parenting, you know, like my business partner, Matt, our relationship is like a marriage in a lot of ways. hundred percent. Yeah. And our employees are like our children in a lot of ways, how you have to build them up, how you have to, you know, you're always wanting what's best for them. Um, the other thing that it's really helped me as a parent is, um, to, to constantly be, I have great conversations and my daughter, it was funny last, it would have been about a year and a half ago, we were in Florida and uh, there was an issue where she was actually breaking up with her boyfriend and I'm sitting there writing down on paper trying to coach her how the best way to do it and her friend just looks at it. she says, I wish I had a relationship like this with my parents. Um, and it's about, first of all, like I've always wanted to be a parent. I've always wanted to be a dad. So it's been a, a pleasure of mine, but it's like you, you have to engage with them. You know, if you have employees and you just hire them and never talk to them, have no relationship with them or whatever, they're not going to feel part of the family. They're not going to feel part of the business. They're not going to know the direction. They're going to be messed up when it comes to expectations. So it's a matter of communicating mm -hmm. and whether it's your family or employees, you've got to communicate. You've got to, you know, we actually have a uh, therapist that we pay for um, who every two weeks we have a guided conversation with our daughter. So my my eldest daughter passed away about a year and a half ago of so cancer. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Um, and is, of course, like, you, you know, the negative that comes from that, but the positive, too, because, again, it's like it makes you refocus on things kind of like in business. How, you know, when what's really go important. South, Exactly. All of a sudden you start looking at your budgeting and stuff because, you know, it just brings back what's important. So for my, you know, for when Kale passed away, it really made me realize like it's even that much more. I want to make sure that I'm in touch and really understanding how my daughter's doing. So we actually pay someone to guide a conversation with us where we talk about five main principles on the call, hmm. which all cover main points that we want to make sure in our lives we're communicating well and holding each other accountable. So we actually, you know, she's only 19, but we try to make these, as much as they're loving parenting conversations, we, we really want to make her a part of the family from the perspective of these are the decisions we're making. We're not just treating you like a child. We're actually wanting you to be part of these conversations. And it's really done well. And I mean, the same thing within business. When you bring in your employees and actually give them that feeling where they feel like I actually matter, I have a say, I, you know, things aren't just happening out of my control. It just builds trust, you know, and building trust is so important. So, I mean, that's the top thing that comes to my mind when you ask that question. Yeah. So Jason, on those calls, is it you, your wife and your daughter? Who's on the call? Yeah, the three of us plus the lady and Claire that we uh, work with. So she sits there, it's all video. Um, and she, so what we did was the first few calls, we created an outline. So we started with what's the purpose of doing these. Then we said, what are the five topics we came up with that we really wanted to know about? Mm. So we have a general check in. Then we get into things like health, finances, school, relationships, mm. um, and then just open. So we talk about each one of those so that. There's also no, you know, she's at school and one of the things, you know, like financially we're really good, but we don't want to spoil her. So with our daughter, we said, we'll pay for all your schooling and all your education and all your food, all your home, I mean. But when it comes to like miscellaneous spending, for example, it's like, no. You guys like, start the Amazon business. You, well, exactly. Or get a job, <laughs> like do something where, you know, because you, you need them to be building on themselves. But by having this relationship and having this conversation we're having, we really set the groundwork where we can talk about the reasons for doing it. Mm -hmm. And she can share like her opinions. And it just seems to uh, – it's really helping also transition from – you know, because when your kids grow, they come into an adult, they change, but they still look at you a lot of times in the same light. So it's us trying to help them kind of 
it, it's a, it, at the end goal. The purpose of it is to be able to create a stronger friendship and relationship mm-hmm. with my daughter. I mean, how that, did you that's decide to goal. first start to do that? Like, who, did someone <laughs> someone prompt you? Like, in every two weeks, <laughs> a san- sanity in marriage. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I I joke a little bit, but at the same time, I'm very serious. Where, um, you know, parenting's tough, man. And, you know, when you go through the loss of the child like we did with my eldest, you know, all of a sudden you realize you don't have a clue what you're doing. And you see all these other people and you hear that you're a good parent. And then you just feel like, oh, I screwed up here. Um, And so me and my wife were just kind of like banging our heads against the wall trying to figure out how can we help, you know, because there's little things like, you know, every teenage girl, what girl doesn't clean up her room? Like those kind of things. But it's like it seems like you ever see the movie Fifty First Dates? came out years ago, you know, mm-hmm, and it was, mm-hmm. it felt like that where every morning, like you were just starting <laughs> all over again. So we were like, what are we, you know, obviously we're doing something wrong. And we realized like as parents, it's like, yeah, we can lay down the law as, you know, as a parent and just say, this is how it is, but maybe we're wrong, you know? So we want, and because of going through the loss of the child, we needed some help anyway, because, you know, that just brings up a whole lot. You don't know what's normal, what what's not normal. So as we were working with her, we realized, well, why don't we ask if she would do this? And mm. she, she was all over. She said, I'd love to work with you guys on mm. that. Um, so it was kind of like a, you know, I don't want to say it was a latched last ditch effort because it wasn't at that point. But it was at a point where just accepting, you don't, you know, we didn't know what we didn't know. You know, like, and without that, I mean, we didn't know where to turn, how to make things better. Um, And we were all, you know, struggling so much emotionally. And it's just, it's just taken such a weight off. It's helped her transition. She's in university now. And Mm -hmm. the transition has been incredible. Um, You know, we were able to sit down because so many times you sit down with your your child and right away, like they're rolling their eyes like, oh, my God, like you don't know what you're talking about. You're a dumb adult, you know, but by having that framework that we did, it really set it up for success. Mm. Um, And I've been super, super happy. Yeah. So I have to ask about the five main principles, but we will give a shout out to. So Jillian, they should check out. She's she's an amazing, talented singer, um, songwriter. I listened to a few episodes, you know, a few episodes, a few uh, songs today. <laughs> um, so you can go to JillianKatzenbach.com. Uh, that's you know, I have a Jillian. One of my daughters is Jillian. I have two daughters Sweet. also. Um, Jillian K A T Z E N B A C K dot com and check it out. Um, she'll be releasing some more albums, which we'll talk about. But the five main principles. Jason, this this is like we're not even gonna talk e commerce. This is like the real deal. But <laughs> I mean we will talk e commerce too, of course. Sure, but, sure, sure. But this is why people should do you know, get into um amazing dot com or e commerce so that you can have the freedom, you know what I mean? When for the good and the and the bad stuff. Um so the five main principles. Tell me a little bit about about that. Well, you know, at first we were kind of like, what do we talk about? What do we talk about? And then it was like, well, what are the main stressors we have? And so, you know, number one was, well, we just want to know how you are. Like, and so what we do is the start of the call, it's just a check in. It's like, so how are you today? How has your week been? And what have been some major issues, either good or bad, that have affected you this week? Mm-hmm. So what that does is it helps us just start the conversation with where everyone's at. Um, and it's been really helpful, too, because oftentimes, you know, as the father, I'm trying to put on this smile. And you know what it's like running a business. I mean, there's times where it's stressful. You know, you're sitting there in like sleepless nights um, just because of decisions you have to make, projects that are on the go. So being able to be open with them like that helps a lot, too. So they see where I'm coming from mm. so that they know if all of a sudden that week I might be a little bit more edgy. Well, this is why, you know, right, I have right. this kind of stuff. So that helps a lot. And then so we all go around, the three of us. We, we, we have uh, no interruptions. You talk until you're done talking. Then in every meeting, we have someone else facilitated. So it'll either be me, Charlene, mm. or my daughter, Jillian. So we'll rotate it around. So we, we create an official agenda. It and has the, the therapist purpose moderates. The, t- the therapist moderates. And the therapist moderates. Gotcha. And what's wonderful about that is, from and it's helped both from Jillian's side and from our side, it brings that normalcy. So, you know, just for example, I'll, I'll pick something really easy, like the messy bedroom. Like the therapist will just say, 
look, I've worked with a thousand teenagers, 99% of them have messy bedrooms, your daughter's normal, you know, and it's just like, all of a sudden, you're like, ah, but she'll do the same to my daughter will say, look, your parents are only doing this because they love you. Believe me, every parent does this. It's normal. And so it just helps because she's Her job is not to defend anybody. It's to make sure that we're looking at this with the most clear vision as possible. So Mm -hmm. it works really well. Mm -hmm. So then once we're done that, um, the next one we talk about is finance. So where you are financially. So she worked all summer because she knows that her whole life for college, she's got room, she's got food, she's got books, she's got all of the main necessities that she needs. But she also has this extracurricular stuff she wants to do, so she knows how much money has. So right now, we're our what we're working together with finance is to get her to get a job. So she's been applying to jobs, and she's had quite a few interviews so far. So we're helping and you don't go her. <coughs> amazing, Deca. Amazing. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, uh, her and her boyfriend have thought of starting it, and they really want to start um, the next release of our music ASM supplies program, or is, something. You know what I mean? Like do something. Uh, yeah. You know, one of the things I realized because with my oldest daughter, I felt the same way too. Just because you're an entrepreneur doesn't yeah. mean other people Good are point. entrepreneurs. Good you point. know, and it's. Good point. It's Point like, and taken. she's really persuaded, yeah. uh, really loving her music. But I'll tell you, I'd love it. Like, I would absolutely love it if they did it. Um, but yeah, you know. yeah. Anyway, so, so she's so, looking for a job. Yeah. 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 Um, I, you know, and, and with that too, um, you know, the whole thing with working for a job too is I do, you just really want her to have, at times you feel like we've been very blessed in life. Like, my career, my business has done very well. And so I've been able to bless my children very well. But at the same time, you don't want them to lose perspective of reality. And, you know, I'm not going to be there. You know, it's kind of like the handing off time in life now. Like you've got to start taking care of yourself. Um, I'll always be there as a parent, but I'm not going to pay your bills for the rest of your life kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so then we just talk about what are the other main things. So we mm-hmm. want to make sure that she's staying healthy. And we talk about physical health and also mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to know about her relationships. How is her relationship with her boyfriend? How is her relationship with her friends? So, Because we want to try to have everything as clear and upfront as possible. And we also make a statement that um, we're allowed to, if we ever have a conversation come up where someone's like, I don't want to talk about this right now, that's allowed to happen. But we also agree that we get to bring it up in 24 hours. Mm. So. You know, because there's times where, like, as a parent, I'm just anxiously got an itch that I got to scratch and I want this fixed now. And she's like, Dad, I don't want to talk about it right now. Like, can we talk about it later? And it's like, okay. Then you have 50 up. things. I'm, not, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So, uh, but overall, like, it, it, it really, um, in fact, we have one today, um, an hour after this uh, podcast is done, we're going to be having our Monday meeting. So, okay. yeah, we do it once a week. Very cool. No, thank you for sharing that. Um, and then, you know, the um, your favorite song from Jillian. So I, there's two of them that – so Telecaster is probably my favorite. Uh, but Green, it's a close tie. Telecaster just I, – I, I just think the production of it is really neat. Um, she writes all her own lyrics, uh, mm-hmm. all her own song. Like she, how this works is she, she's a guitar player, singer songwriter. So she writes the song and writes the music for it, and then she works with a production company that then add all this other instrumentation to it. And it's just such a neat process. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would have to say that I think right now, well, she's coming out with a new song called 956, which is a real te- tearjerker to us because it's all about the experience of going through the loss of her sister. And she passed away at 9.56, so mm. that's why they call it that. So that one's coming out, and I have to admit, that one I think is just so incredibly gorgeous. Mm. Um, that would be my favorite, but right okay. now with what's released, it's definitely... We'll have to uh, push that out and promote that when it goes live, so let us know, Sweet. and then... I will. Um, what have you learned from Gail? I'm so sorry to hear what had happened. Um, you know, her legacy, I'm sure, lives on. What have you learned from, from her? that you probably that that probably bleeds into oh, your business and your life and, and everything probably on a daily basis i imagine um you know one of the things is um love 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 it mm. is just you know life's too short and you can sit there and get so frustrated and angry at so many little things mm-hmm. 
that are just a waste of life, you know, like, mm. and, and, you know, I would have to admit that anyone I talk to that loses a child or loses a loved one, patient seems to be one of those things that they wish they had more of. Mm. Um, but the other thing that it's really helped, so my daughter, Jillian, for example, was really good at saving money. My daughter, Gail, the oldest one, if she had $10 in her pocket, it was burning a hole. You know, and, and we used to worry us. And then what happened is here, Gail had lived her life to the fullest, had so much fun. And when she passed away, if she would have socked all that money away, mm. the age of 21, like, what a waste. You know, and so I'm not telling people to, yeah. well, and my mom, when she passed away, she was only 49 years old. And so wow. I was 23 when that, yeah. And when she died, she didn't have very much money left to her. Now, I don't like, I'm not taking that routine. I'm not sitting here spending all my money. But I guess one of the things that it made me realize yeah. is, first of all, life's about living and enjoying. Yeah. Like if you're sitting there not enjoying life, like life's too hard, man. Like totally. there's constantly, like every day there's a stress or there's something potential. So it's first of all kind of trying to not be so serious about life all the time. But also the big thing for me, especially when she was going with cancer, that uh, with those years that you'd have weeks where it's just horrible. But all of a sudden you'd have a day that was just amazing where she was just like she wasn't sick anymore. Mm. And instead of sitting there saying like, oh, crap, she's going to be sick again tomorrow, it was just stopping and enjoying the right now. Mm. And so many times in life I think it's important to do that when – just stop for a second and think everyone's okay. Everyone's work, you know, everything's going well. We've got everything clear. Like just stop and enjoy it. And sometimes, you know, they say stop and smell the roses, but it really is just like that. Like sometimes it's so important to just step aside and not like they say the forest through the trees. And it's so true. Like you're, there's always going to be something to be stressed about, but sometimes you've got to force yourself to stop and think of something mm. to be, thankful about totally. so for me that totally. was a big totally thank you for sharing that um and you talked about living life um what do you do differently because of like you said you don't you don't like spend all your money you don't drain your bank account and go on all these lavish trips but but what have you done differently in the past you know year or so because you're like maybe you would have chosen a different decision before but now you're like that came in your mind you're like i need to just live life I'm back in Canada. So, uh -huh. uh, you know, and what I mean by that is, you know, I moved to Austin six years ago. We were mm -hmm. creating this business, going to travel the world, do that dot-com lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I realized, like, number one, man, family and friends, like your true family and friends, you know, it's, it's if you have that, protect that. Um, because one thing that was a big thing that I missed is when I was traveling mm -hmm. around. And so I have wonderful friends. Like I've met wonderful friends in Austin and all that kind of stuff. And so I guess I'm talking primarily family here. Like for me, it's, it really made me realize how much I missed my family and that traveling the world and living this sort of lifestyle, it was fun for a little bit, but it's like, no, I, I mean, I just, mm. I want to relax and just mm. be surrounded with people that just know me for me, trust me for me. Like I have a relationship with, I'm not always trying to, you know, it's just a different world. And I don't know how else to explain it from mm. that, perspective, but I'd say that was my biggest one. And also uh, minimalizing, uh, mm. you know, you know whether this is a midlife crisis thing or what. <laughs> You've gone the reverse of everyone, Jason. It's like, no, I didn't <laughs> went from like traveling and stuff to not traveling and getting rid of stuff. So. Yeah, we're this is we're actually going to spend the winter back in Canada this year instead of like making sure we're around palm trees and that stuff. That sounds we terrible just... to me, to be honest with you. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like don't get me wrong, like we're still going to travel. I'm not okay. going to be stuck here all winter. Like we love Arizona even. Okay. Um, just going somewhere a little warmer for a few weeks, but the idea is just like trying to not have so much chaos and movement. You know, like one of the things I find for running a company, you know, at first, you know, it's so great to say you can have have that lifestyle and some people love it where as long as you have a laptop and an internet connection you can work wherever you want from the world and, mm -hmm. and that's very true for me but what I find if I don't have a daily routine it's so hard to get into that routine mm. so if I'm traveling like that travel day I'm a terrible traveler I really am and I've just had to realize that for myself 
my travel days don't even look at work because it's just going to stress you out. It's going to overwhelm you. So what I do then is I just book my travel day. And so then what I need to do is know, okay, tomorrow, because I like to plan every day the night before. So this is what I'm doing tomorrow. So if all of a sudden, like, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to work from and there's all these events yeah. going on, it just it, it zaps me. It's not, not. And, you know, for those people that love that kind of stuff, that's good for you. But I found, like, definitely routine and a common workspace is dramatically more effective for me than just going mm. wherever. And mm. it's nice, yeah, some days, like, to get out of the house and go to a Starbucks or something just to have – People around you does help, but for the most part, I like to sit at my desk and just work all day at my desk, and then when I'm done, I'm done and walk away from it. So, Jason, um, I want to go back to directly, yeah. okay, go ahead. Yeah, no, um, I want to go back to when you first met Matt. Okay, so set the scene. I'm at an underground Yannick Silver event. Okay, this young guy go. You know, they had people come up on stage and pitch what they're doing and if they they voted for the best idea and that person was going to speak at the next underground matt clark was like in the same row as me he walks up and he was one of those people pitching you know what his business was doing and he got voted on that yannick silver event to come back as like wow like he blew people's minds with what he was working on and the next year he came back and was one of the speakers um you met matt Right at a Yannick uh, mastermind. No, actually in the Mavericks. So at the Mavericks. His, okay, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, go ahead. So it, it was a mastermind call where every two weeks we'd get together, and there was like five people, um, and all great, great people. Um, and so what we when we first met here, there's this. So I've always been a little. I've always been. I, I enjoy humor, and so. I don't want it. I can't be in a business meeting and just be straight serious all the time. Like I have to look for the humor and things. I like to like let people be a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. um, and here's this young guy that came in only 24 years old. And this guy was like, he was straight laced and just business, you know, like, <laughs> and, and he was talking and here I'm kind of like passing some jokes and you'd see the look on his face and the other guys would laugh. Um, and so I, I saw this kid and I'm like, oh my goodness, when I was 24 years old, I was nowhere near focused like this. Um, and at that time in my business, I was focusing more on Google and uh, AdWords and those kind of things in affiliate marketing. And I had tools that were, were helping me with tele affiliate marketing and training. So I was um, doing that as well. So I hear this young guy, all of a sudden he says he's doing $100,000 a month plus on Amazon with over a 50% profit margin. And I'm like, affiliate marketing? He's like, no, 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 I sell my own products. I said, so you're a manufacturer? He goes, well, no, I order my products from China. Um, not from China, actually, he was getting them from the States at that time because he was in the health industry. And he said, I just put my own label on them. And I'm like, you can do that? It's like, it's not wholesale. And so it was just this business model I hadn't heard of. Um, and he's like, yeah. So he starts talking to us more. And, and um, that way it was right at that time that that's when Yannick wanted him to speak at mm -hmm. the next uh, underground. So I asked him, I said, would you ever be interested in teaching this online? Because I have a list of 250,000 people um, and I have a membership site where we teach people different business models. And he was like, yes, he goes, I've always wanted to go teach people. I love helping and um, building other people up. So we said, well, why don't we get together and uh, make a course? And so what was ironic about that is, so originally how me and Matt's business worked is it was my company, my business, but I paid him as a partner. And most people, when I work, it takes you like quite a bit to kind of get ramped up, figure things out and then start creating the videos. Well, at the time we started working together, I promised my wife at the time, yeah, well, she's my wife, I promised Shailene, because we just got married about a year before that, that we would go on a honeymoon for a month to Thailand. So I told him, I said, okay, so we kind of got to put things on hold for the next month, um, but I'm going to Thailand. He goes, well, I can probably spit out all the outline in the videos. And I'm like, okay, so I'm thinking he's going to get a couple videos done. Within four weeks, he got the whole court, everything. And I'm just kind of like, what? Well, you know, so here's this guy, just super clear, focused mind, yeah. super hardworking and super dedicated and knew what he was talking about. Like everything was in his mind already. He's been in the trenches. You know, it's not like. He, he, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. 
And so we launched a program at the time called was the Amazing Money Machine. Um, and it taught three aspects. It taught Kindle, it taught um, wholesale and wholesale slash drop shipping, and mm -hmm. it caught, uh, taught private label. So in that first year when we were doing this, we were looking at all the results our, our results our students were getting, and the private label people were getting about 95% of the mm. results, and we're just crushing it. So what we realized is like, why are we even wasting time teaching Kindle and wholesale? Let's revamp this and just, just teach private label. Mm. And it was at that time that I said, that's a great idea, and I should start my own private label product too. So within four months of me starting my own private label with Matt helping me, but it was a brand new product, nothing, I've never been in the health industry before. Within four months, I was doing $200,000 a month, $100,000 a month profit. Wow. Now I give a lot of thanks to Dr. Oz because my products at the time were raspberry ketones. And so well, you that chose was wisely, health. you know what I mean? I did, I really did, I chose wisely. Just to give you an FYI, I'm seeing tons of lightning, so I'm just making sure everything's good with our call, <laughs> so in case you hear something. Um, but, so with that, um, all of a sudden we revamped, we repackaged it, and we launched as a new program called Amazing Cell Machine. And we actually worked with a guy, I don't know if you know John Reese. Uh, yes, I've, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. If you've been around, he had like more traffic than a secrets or something. Exactly. He had like an early yeah. on course. He was like the first person to do a million dollars in a day with the launch in of In 24 course. hour period, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So he's just an absolute genius guy who doesn't really like the spotlight. So he loves the strategy and the behind the scenes stuff. And so I had a good relationship with him because my previous business partner, uh, Jason Potash and him were really good friends. So me and John, he ended up coming on board with us and he helped us with the branding and getting some things up. And right away, he's like, you guys have a, like a huge, huge opportunity here because like he's looking at the results we're getting. He's looking at the business model. And he's like, I've never seen anything so perfectly timed for this. Um, and then we launched and the first year when we launched the program, we did a million dollars in the whole year. The second time we launched in the first nine days, we did six and a half million because everyone just saw the opportunity here. And I'm so proud to say that we've had over 30,000 students go through this and we estimate close to about nine billion dollars in revenue that our students have generated wow. on Amazon right now. And we like to say that's a very safe estimate because it's going off of the reporting that our students submit. So we have, you know, working with, like we have to make sure we're above board with all of our uh, calculations and everything and all of our proof. Uh, but it's just really humbling to know. And what's really neat about that is all of the tools that have come out, all the training programs are all our students. So there's so much of it that came from us. It's um, a lot of branch humbling. Yeah. And now when we go, you know, the, the people talk about their passion. What's your passion? So my passion right now is changing people's lives. Um, and that might sound cliche, but it's so real because of what happened was at our second live event. Actually, I should say at our first live event we ever did, there was only about 500 people. there, And when we ended the event, 90 percent of the people lined up around the room to come give me and Matt a hug. Mm. Uh, we didn't plan this or anything. People were crying, wanting our audience, saying, you have no idea how much you changed my life. And we're sitting there, like, looking at each other. It's like, oh, my goodness. You know, you build something. It becomes real, you know, when you're in that person. Becomes, yeah. yeah. When all of a sudden, and so now I can say with a passion that, like, I'm truly passionate about changing people's lives and the way I do it. Well, there's two ways to do it. Number one, I, I, it's mindset. But number two is I give them a path where here is a path. If you don't have a path to follow, there's a lot of paths you can follow, but here's a path that we've marked out for you with a proven program of how you can now financially become free. And when you get that freedom, when you create that business, um, just the, what it does for your life is absolutely mm. groundbreaking. Now, with that, I do have a disclaimer. What we've learned over the years, too, people used to ask me, can anyone do this? No. No. Can anyone complete the course and get a product selling on Amazon? Yes, absolutely. But not everyone's an entrepreneur. And that's something that you have to realize is that some people, be honest with yourself, if you're a plumber and you absolutely love being a plumber, why wouldn't you just keep doing that? You know, like money is one thing and it's like it's nice to think that, oh, once you have money, they've proven it over and over again, even salary studies, that when you hit a certain threshold of finances, and I knew, I know it used to be like 75 grand, I think it's a little bit more than that now, but above that, the amount of happiness people have in their lives mm -hmm. is micro. 
you know, so it's like, it, it's about like, what are those other things? Do you want to be able to, like, we have this one couple, um, the Zigglers, where they were, they were optometrists who f- were not really wanting to be optometrists anymore. They came across ASM. They created their own brand of products. They're extremely successful. Last year, they did over $4 million. Um, and what they do now is they travel the world helping to give um, um, eyesight health um, mm. help to third world countries Mm. you know it's like they could never have done that being an optometrist because now they have that freedom where they can take their laptop with them work their business from wherever they are in the world um but if you're someone that you love to like just do what you're told and there's nothing wrong with that that's the other thing like get that stigma out of your head now chances are if you're listening to something like this you're probably an entrepreneur you're probably someone who's looking at like i there's way more i can do than what i'm doing right now um, but you do need to be honest with yourself about that. And that's one of the things we do with our program. We actually give a six-month uh, refund. It's called our six-month buyback. And what we do is because we realize we give 30 days refund right off the bat. And you, you have to do that from a legal compliance standpoint. Like within your first 30 days, if you're not happy, no questions, no ask. But what we also do is we put behind that a six-month guarantee where we give you the criteria. You have to follow the training in this time period because we can't just leave it open-ended. But at the end of the six months, if you're not happy with the business, we're not saying not successful. You might, you might be wildly successful, but just not like running the business, we'll give you your money back. Hmm. You just proved to us you did everything and saying, no, I don't want to sell on Amazon anymore. Okay, this wasn't for you. Hmm. I think out of since we've started, I think we've had maybe four people take us up on that, hmm. which is cool that we're allowing people to take up on it. But it makes us feel better, too, because we don't want, you know, we want to make sure that people truly have that opportunity. And what it allows us to prove to people, too, is that we will fulfill on our end. Within six months, if you follow our system, this is what you will have. And then at that time, you can decide if it's really worth it for you or not. Um, yeah. Jason, um, you know, what's unique a bit, most people who, or businesses who come out with courses, um, they're not updating it every year. You know, it may be a couple years and maybe never. Um, so what's unique is you guys really, you know, are updating the uh, the flagship course every year. So make sure people are going to get the latest and greatest twice a year, actually. twice, twice a year. Okay. Wow. Yep. Um, so I'm wondering from this year and we're one where I want to know from this year compared to the last or the last update, what's, what's changed, what's been updated, uh, what can people expect, but where should people check out? Should they go to write to amazing.com or where should people go to check out? Um, amazing oh, selling machine. So, so you can, com. yeah, you can go to amazing.com okay. and then, so that's our, that, you know, kind of think of it like Apple. If you're looking for the iPhone, if you go to Apple, mm-hmm. then it'll, so, so on amazing.com, you'll be able to find seller pro, all those other things. Mm-hmm. But if you go to amazing machine.com, we actually are giving away a free training. So you'll be able to go there. You'll be able to learn the pretty much as much as you need to know about this business model Mm -hmm. um, and all the steps that you need to do to complete it. Now, we obviously don't go into details on certain things because that's why we've had to create 120 hours worth of training because there's so much to learn, but it gives you a good overview. Totally. I've Uh, watched some of the trainings before. They're really comprehensive. They give you kind of the outline of what you need to think about. um, And and we've had many people come up to us at the events even. There's actually, there's a guy at the event and I had him give five thousand dollars towards uh charity because he had a check and he says i want to give this to you and it's like i don't want it you didn't do any you didn't steal from me he just went through the free training Mm. and was able to get a business going it is really cool and so what he ended up doing was putting money towards it was actually a gofundme for a lady christy that used to work as a mentor she passed away too Mm. um but he was able to give money towards her family and it was like wow that's so cool like it's all about that giving back you know it's not it's not all about making money now of course the reason we got into this i'm not gonna lie was to make money you know like it was to build a business yeah but to build a business in a way that you know we felt fulfilled about and uh mm-hmm. wow it's just knocked your socks off but with you know i want to say a couple things so first of all i've been blown away with how many people think that they can just create a course um and people can succeed it's like it's so much more than that we have mentors we have like so much community we have we provide all these extra resources but the biggest thing is the constant updating 
you know, Amazon changes their terms of service all the time. And something that, you know, might work totally legitimately now, six months from now, it might get your account banned. Right. And so if you're not constantly updating your training, there's a huge risk factor. But also from a, from a, a standpoint of results that just like Google, you like remember back in the days when Penguin and all of those things were coming out. If you weren't totally up to date with the latest things, like your your marketing strategies were just floundering because it's like, well, why can't I do this? Oh, I'm getting links from these kind of sites. So it's the same as Amazon. If all of a sudden you're doing something a certain way, um, you know, one thing that Amazon used to like has changed dramatically, even is going out of inventory before you could go out of inventory for a few weeks. It wouldn't really hurt you. Now, if you're an established seller and go out of inventory for a few weeks, it kills your business. Mm. So there's a lot. And so there's strategies about how you handle that. Um, so what we do is every year we do a complete audit twice a year. But um, one time a year, usually the first quarter of the year, we'll update 50% of the training, but keep all the same video. Because um, every year we update the branding a little bit, update the templates, just try to you know bring the color up a little bit. But we'll do one upgrade where we just keep everything the same. And so oftentimes it'll be between about a 40 to 60% video update because not everything needs to be changed. And a lot of it isn't just it's a lot. changes. It is. It's a it lot. Is. It's a lot of work. Um, and then the other time of year, we update 100% of it. So we update every single video. Um, so even if there's a strategy in it that doesn't need to be updated, we just look at, well, how can we make the video even better? What mm. fluff can we take out? What are the points that we can yeah, really drive That's pretty on? cool. Um, and the other thing that we look at is, you know, in our dream situation, now, th there is that thing you've got to always remember, like you, get, you teach someone to fish rather than fishing for them. But some people want you to fish for them and help them do that a lot more. So some of the stuff we're really trying to implement is how we can do stuff for you. Mm. So, for example, we created a brand new software tool that uh, people are going to get in a couple of weeks that helps you pick your products. It's the best tool out on the market. They get it, you'll get it completely free. This will show you how to pick products way quicker than you've been able to do. We've actually implemented with this uh, in October um, where now we're going to help all of our students source their first product. So it's just it's the what we look at mm. is we're constantly analyzing. How can you move them further and further to exactly. success? Essentially. So it's like where's their drop? There's a great book. Oh my goodness, I wish I could remember it right now. It's actually about manufacturing, but it talks about bottlenecks. And it's like in your in your production, whether it be you know an online membership or whatever. But where's the bottleneck? Where is it that the bottleneck in Everyone's this getting case stuck. is? Where are most people getting stuck or refunded? What's causing the refunds? So we're constantly looking at that, and by doing that, you know you might look at it. Well, of course you want to prevent refunds because you save money. Well, no, the way you're preventing refunds means your students are getting better results. Because if they're not refunding, that means that they're happy, they're having a good experience. Um, so it's a matter of just constantly looking at those things and to just be able to make something and think, oh, this is live now and, and everyone can use this. It doesn't work that way. It's uh, it, it's it's and a huge, huge portion of our, our budget of our expense is paying because you can't you don't want to just pay for people off the street. You don't want to just hire someone. There's. I don't really want to shoot down things, but there's a public site out there where there's a lot of courses on it. Well, the majority of those courses are just professional course makers. They're not actually experts in that field. And I'm not saying that, that I, I use that site every now and again when I want, I was actually learning about Tag Manager and Google Tag Manager. So for example, I went there and did that. But you gotta remember too, like that's one of the things we do is we make sure people that are selling or teaching are professionals, very successful. They have to have a successful business. They have yeah. to have a passion for teaching people. You have to do and your research on where your the source of the information is coming from. Exactly, exactly. It's just it's too risky. And if our goal is to help people, you know, because we're not about helping people create an Amazon business. We're about helping people create a physical products business that leverages Amazon. Because yeah. once you launch on Amazon, you can do whatever you want. Like totally. we recommend, of course, open your own Shopify store, try to get on Walmart, try to sell on different platforms, try to get in physical stores. Um, but it's all about initially creating that brand and launching on the world's biggest yeah. 
you know, buying platform. Yeah, and you know, there's already tons of eyeballs there, so why make it harder than you to launch, right? You launch exactly. there, get the capital, and then explore the harder. I mean, you need a, I don't know, a lot more skills, but definitely different skill sets to launch on Shopify and drive your own oh. traffic to to your own site. It's a totally different skill set. Yeah, because if you're not good at learning how to drive traffic and doing split tests and running analytics, like good luck with Shopify, you know, and that but that's a progression. You know, when we tell people, you know, when you're starting any business, um, you kind of got to look at it like your first go at it is a practice run. And a lot of people say, oh, the first product, I want to be a millionaire off my first product. And that can happen. I'm not saying it's not. We got a great, uh, great testimonial of uh, Ann Ferris. She's one of our students. She lives in Costa Rica now. The very first product she came out with, she's she got up to over $100,000 a month. That's not the norm. Right. That really right. isn't. You know, and you might be able to make ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month off that one product. But chances are it's going to take you a couple products to start ramping it up. Mm. Your first product is all about learning the business. Now we want, you know, we teach you to have as little risk as possible and pick the best product as possible. But you're trying to learn all the nuances of Amazon. You're trying to learn the nuances of who your market is and how you can build more on your market and how to promote it. And so, you know, until you're ready, you see a lot of people, they want to start with 10 products and they want to start with like on Amazon, on eBay and Shopify. And I'm like, good luck. Like there's no way I would ever do that. Like pick one little focus and just right. do it and get really good at it and then start expanding. Um, and that's a big focus. Of yeah, Jason, you said, you know, you have this new, new tool and you know, for anyone starting or actually not even anyone starting, but anyone who's just looking for to expand even, it'd be helpful to get this and learn what product should they pick. Um, what, what does the tool do? Talk a little about the tool and then I'd love to hear what other tools you recommend, whether it's from your company or outside. Yeah, so what this tool does is it, it basically takes all of the um, products on Amazon and allows you to filter out the data accordingly. And it also gives you estimates of how much money per month, how much revenue per month a product will make. So when you're picking a product to get started, there's kind of like the first, I don't want to say superficial, that's not the right word, but there's kind of like the initial. Like a filter you want to, almost. Right. Yeah, like there's the quick filters where make sure you don't want something that's got a less of a BSR than 6,000. Now, BSR just means top level bestseller rank. So that means in that category, it's in the top 6,000 products. Because then what that tells you is there's demand for it. Then you want to look at price point. You know, and the re we pick between, I believe, $19 and $70. And the reason we do that is because if you go any higher than $70, then it ties up a lot of capital to get the product. If you go less than $19, you're just not going to no make profit, profit margin. margin. No, yeah. you're, you're not. Um, and so you've got these little criteria that we pick. But then once you get the product, that's when you've got to start looking at the manufacturers. You start looking, you know, you want to order who the competition is. Really find out, you know, feeling that in your hand, how the product is, how can you make it better. And I always recommend, you know, and I'm glad you brought that up because there's two distinct differences here. There's market research, product research for someone just starting out. And then there's market research for someone who's established. Now, if you're just starting out, you want to start with the simplest product possible. Because you don't want to have to deal with negative reviews. You don't want to have to deal with tough technical support. You want to pick a product and your goal is I want a product that is going to fulfill the desire of the user. So if I'm buying a, a spatula, you make sure that that product does what a spatula is expected to do. And then you go above and beyond from that. You start looking at the competition and you look at their reviews and you start, you know, for example, let's say you find that on average a lot of them say the handle breaks too easily. Well, then what I would do is I would make sure I'd work with my manufacturer. How can we make sure that we have a more durable handle? And you'd look for those kind of things. But you don't want to go overboard because your first test is just getting the product to market with as little branding as possible and just testing a few hundred units to see if it's going to take off. Because you would hate to go through all this branding, make all this beautiful packaging, invest in all this inventory, then get it up on Amazon and just find like, oh, it's not really selling. You know, so by picking only a couple hundred units of the thing, making it as low branded as possible, don't go fancy with packaging, just get it up and see if it sells. And then once it starts selling, then you're like, okay, now I start improving it. And from that time on, every time you do an order for new inventory, you add one improvement 
Always add one, whether it be the the insert you put with the product, the color options, like you're always looking at what are the people saying about this product? What is something they wish could be better? And you're just those little improvements all the time. And then that's how you start growing. And then once you get to a point, we usually recommend, you know, the first six months, don't even start looking at another product. Just focus those first six months of getting your product up and running. And then once you have a product up and running, if that's the niche that you want to stay in, because we don't want people like you don't want to be selling, you know, uh, cell phone covers and and baby stuff, you know, because it's like, well, how are you going to market that? You're going to be talking to two different audiences. So you do want to kind of create a brand, but you don't want to jump into that too early because you might start with cell phone covers and realize, no, I don't like this. I actually want to go into baby stuff. Um, And so we really teach people how to go as low risk as possible. So this way, even if your product isn't selling very well, well, you just lower the price, sell out of inventory and reinvest that money in a different inventory. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Totally. Okay. Yeah. Um, what are some What are some other numbers that people should be thinking about using Amazon? You mentioned BSR top six thousand price between nineteen thousand seventy. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, less than a thousand reviews. So you know, think of it this way. Um, it, let's just say you go on Amazon right now, and let's. I'm just gonna pick some. Um, oh, yeah. So just uh, a, a a surge protector. So you go on here and you're looking like, okay, let's say a surge protector. So I I go on Amazon and I see a product that has, say, a 2,000 BSR um, and it's priced 34 bucks. I'm like, this looks good. But I can't find any other products in the top 6,000 BSR that is the same. So what that tells you right away is it's like probably not a good product to go for because what's happening there is either it's a one-off fluke or it's a company with a good marketing engine, good amount of leads where they're funneling people into there. But if you find two or three other products in that top level, well, then you know, ah, this isn't a fluke. This is a product that there's high demand on Amazon and so people are buying it. Then you want to look at reviews. So if let's say you find three other surge protectors, you're going to find a lot more than three surge protectors on Amazon, but just using it as an example. But if all of them have over a thousand reviews, then we would recommend you might want to look for a different type of product because that's a really established product. Now, we're not saying you can't get into that market, but it's just saying you're going to have a little bit of an uphill battle initially because at the end of the day, when you have 10 reviews in your product and everyone else has a thousand, you know what it's like if you shop on Amazon, like that makes a big difference. You know, like the, the social proof is huge. So we look at that. Then the other, then we do look one one avenue. We call it. There's not actually a criteria as to say a number. It's just a mental check. Is this a private label product? Meaning, you know, an iPhone is not a private label product. Like I can't go in there and get someone to make an iPhone and then put my own brand on it. But pretty much everything else in the room, you know, I got one of these sun lamps. You know, perfect example. This is a private label product. You'll find manufacturers yeah. out there that'll make that and put your branding on it. So that you make a list, you make a list of those products, so you get a list of about 10 to 20 products, and you go through and you make sure those criteria, is the BSR good, the pricing good, the amount of reviews good, is it private labelable? And then you start looking at, um, there's another calculation which we get into a lot more now, and it's not something I can just give away on here because I can't talk about it that well. Um, It's a spreadsheet. We look at actually ROI. So... You know, profit margin is important, which is another number. We, we You want to target about a 30% profit margin, but it's a very superficial top-level filtering number because it doesn't really give you the full breadth of what a return on investment is because it depends on your lead time. It depends on how much minimum order inventory you can order because let's say you have $3,000 to work with, but you're ordering a product that has, you know, a three month lead time. Well, it's like, whoa, you know, so what are you going to do two months from now if you run out of inventory? You know, so you've got to look at all of these kind Mm -hmm. of numbers. And that's why, and actually the new training series that we're just giving out, we talk about ROI and we actually Mm -hmm. have, uh, I think it's going to be in the second video. I believe there's a spreadsheet we give, Um, but it's so important because you've got, and you know, that's one of the cool things about this Jeremy is that over the years, as we progress, You know, one of the things that we found is from the community is that by working with other people, we keep getting better because there's only so much knowledge. Like it started with Matt, then it started with me and Matt, and then we added Rich Henderson, then we added Mike McClay, and we, you know, we've been expanding. We have this great guy now, Dan Ashburn, working with us. Um, 
And with all the feedback, all the learning that you have, we're constantly improving on it. You know, when we first launched back in 2012, you know, we taught in a very different way. And it was all based on how everything was working at that time. Well, now the business model has evolved. I mean, it's no different than any type of online business. As things go, they yeah. start to change and evolve. And it's a matter of keeping up with that and constantly looking at what is the best way to get results? And that's what we always focus on. How can we get our students better, faster results? And so we're just constantly modifying mm -hmm. for that. And so, you know, and that's why we also make sure we give all of our students lifetime upgrades. So if someone joins today, if when we mm, redo next year, amazing. you get the training too. Because it, it's it, it's just too volatile, Amazon. Like a year from now, this training might be out of date, and that's not fair to you. So we want to make sure mm. um, we give that's everyone great. lifetime upgrades. Yeah. Jason, um, first of all, thank you. This has been absolutely fantastic. Cool. I know you have to, to go. I have one last qu quick question, but I want to point everyone to go to amazingsellingmachine.com or amazing.com to check out the latest and greatest. And I'm, you know, I, I'd attest that their free trainings are super valuable and very much in depth. So I encourage you. anyone to, to sign up if you haven't checked them out and you are interested in um, you know, something that's actually going to give uh, a portion of freedom potentially to you and your family. Um, check it out. Yeah. Um, and so rapid fire, Jason, um, just some of the best, you know, you have an interesting perspective because you see a lot of different students, just software tools that you see people are using with success um, for Amazon. Sure. Um, so I'm a big advocate of managed by stats. Mm -hmm. um, then that's primarily because of date numbers. So if there's anything that I can tell anyone running a business to get good at math, basic math, know your numbers, understand profit, all of that kind of gross profit, net profit, EBITDA, like it's all those little things that um, you want to know and at the end of the day know your expenses and know your revenue, you know, so um, that's one thing I like about managed by stats uh, Helium 10 is also a, a great resource. They've got uh, great tools on there that help makes life a little bit easier um, for Amazon sellers and really on top of that, I don't recommend Jungle Scout. I would, I would say those would be there, There's a lot of tools out there there really is a lot, and we test a lot yeah, of them. That's like what a I lot figured. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and one of the things too is we'll test a tool, and it'll fail miserably for us, but other people will swear by it. So I don't want to ever shoot anyone down because right. maybe it just didn't work for our product or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'll admit, like managed by stats, Helium Ten, and Jungle Scout, those are the three pretty okay. consistent cool. tools that I've been very, very happy with. Um, they seem to work very well. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there's Free up, free up is actually. I know Nate. The, um, yeah. Yeah, Nate. Nate. Free up is really good if you're looking, especially you know if you're an established seller that's looking to hire some help. Uh, Nate does a good job of having resources for mm -hmm. that. And uh, yeah, no, cool. those are those are the things that come top that's of great. my mind. Yeah. Thank you, thank you again, Jason, for your time. You're I mean, welcome. There's so much we covered, so much. We didn't cover, um, but uh, we got a lot in jammed in there. Check out AmazingSellingMachine.com or Amazing.com. Thank you, Jason. You're more than welcome. Pleasure to be here. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.